Hi, and welcome back to the next episode of the most dangerous TikTok iceberg. In this episode, we will, in this part, we'll go through number four and five of the iceberg, and that will hopefully uh, be the end of this challenge, or this. I'm saying this challenge like I'm doing a TikTok challenge, but that will hopefully be the end of this uh, iceberg, and then maybe all challenges will cease to exist after I've um, done a little magnifying glass on them and uh, really show their true colors. Otherwise, I'll just get started right ahead because again, this is also going to be an extremely long episode and uh, yeah, there's not much more to say. It's going to be a long episode, but hopefully you will enjoy this uh, as I will go through these uh, somewhat funny and somewhat uh, extremely horrifying TikTok challenges. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great time. The Penny Challenge. The Penny Challenge is probably the Darwin Awards Basically, the penny challenge is where you take uh, an outlet, right? You have an outlet and then you plug in a socket halfway through. So the electricity goes into it, but, you know, obviously you have the metal prong sticking out. And people then take a penny and hold it on the exposed prongs. This would often uh, just result in a person getting a slight uh, shock, electricity bolted through them. But uh, sometimes, depending on where you live and different countries, especially in my country, that is 230 volt that goes through the circuits. So usually it's not that big of a problem. You just get a little shock, but it can definitely be deadly in some cases, especially if you also have some sort of heart condition or maybe underlying issues that uh, where you shouldn't get a lot of electricity through your body. Another side effect that it also can cause is that it can start fires because it sparks. So if you have something flammable close by, that can also start a fire in your house or your home. But fortunately, there hasn't been any cases uh, as of yet that has showed any type of serious injury from this challenge. The Skull Breaker Challenge. The Skull Breaker Challenge is... Um, how do you even describe it? I'm not really sure if it can even be called a challenge because in my head, it's basically just aggravated assault. So what the challenge is, is that a person is standing next to you. There's a person here and there's a person here and you stand in the middle and somebody else films you. Then they ask you in the middle to jump. And when you jump, uh, they sweep the legs under you. So you basically fall like back on your head, which is hence the name Skull Breaker Challenge because if they put enough force in it, you'll go from horizontal to vertical and you'll just hit the back of your skull. The stunt first appeared in 2021 in Spain, but it is still going as of 2023 and to 2024 in Brazil. It's still been an ongoing trend and it has unfortunately claimed the lives of two people, two young students. And in 2020 in New Jersey, two students even faced uh, criminal charges against them after they did this uh, prank or challenge towards a friend, well, friend, uh, and it went horribly wrong. The burning pile challenge. The burning pile is a challenge that originally came from people lip syncing a song and the specific part that the lip sync goes like this. Burning pile, throw all my troubles at the world again. It goes all my troubles on a burning pile. And the majority would just lip sync themselves doing uh, this challenge, if you can even call it that. But the big thing is that the song, there's a transition. And when the transition happens, people would do a close-up of themselves while they would have a lighter up to their face where they would show their makeup usually. But there's been a couple of cases where people don't really get the uh, flame to hair ratio correctly. And then they would literally just uh, put fire to themselves. Uh, no cases of it going horribly wrong but uh, definitely a lot of cases of uh, smelling like burnt hair. The Foreigner Challenge is also from a song, and the song is Foreigner by Pop Smoke. And the challenge, how the f*** do I even say this? The challenge is of people showing explicit photos and videos of themselves when they were children. And they say that they do this to raise awareness of predatory behavior and... Um, <coughs> But what it actually does is that it's just um, it's it's just showing CP to a lot of people. Yeah, that's it.
The Tide Pod Challenge. I don't even feel like I have to really talk about this one. The Tide Pod Challenge was a huge challenge that has been spanning many, many years. And Tide Pod, if you do not know what a Tide Pod is, it is a laundry detergent. And the reason why it became a challenge was uh, because the laundry detergent or the washing detergent basically looks like a fun little candy. So it would be children, uh, predominantly children and teens, showing themselves uh, eating this Tide Pod, which you shouldn't do because the Tide Pod is a lot of uh, toxins. It's it's bleach. It's it, it's literally bleach. It was even named a national risk in America in 2012 and 2013. There were reports of over 7,000 cases in America of children and teens eating these Tide Pods and having to go to the ER or call poison control. The Tide Pod Challenge has also directly resulted in six deaths in 2017. Because of this, P&G changed their Tide Pod design to a more opaque design and introduced warning labels. They also added a bitter taste to the chemical, so even if a child were to eat it, even if it's just for a challenge, then they it would be certainly almost impossible for them to actually eat the thing because it would taste so bad. But after that, they even did that. People would then do a challenge where they would try to eat the Tide Pod even with the bitter taste and then they would feel themselves uh, gaggle and gurgle uh, because it would taste so bad that they would start throwing up. Some teens even tried to cook the Tide Pod before they uh, tried to eat it. The timer challenge. This is kind of in the mysterious section. It's not really certain if it's real or not, but uh, this is how it goes at least. The timer challenge is a person sets a 24 hour timer on their phone or on their tablet or whatever. And after those 24 hours have gone by, if nobody has texted them or sent them a message or called them or is in any need of them, then supposedly, allegedly, they would then... um, I'm not really sure there's no cases of this actually being true and any cases of this actually happening, but either way, it's still a really fucked up scenario. The magnet challenge. The magnet challenge might sound pretty risk-free, uh, if you can say it like that, but it really is not. The magnet challenge involves a person taking two magnets and putting them on either side of the tongue. So you would put one on the top and one on the bottom. And that would uh, result in this like piercing looked like you got your tongue pierced but magnets are a huge choking hazard and unfortunately uh, people have choked on them nobody has died of it supposedly allegedly but they're extremely toxic if you do swallow a magnet here are two cases where it went wrong Ellis Tripp 11 years old had to go through a six hour surgery to remove small parts of his bowel five inches to be exact uh, to get the magnet out And nine-year-old Jack Mason had to have removed small parts of his intestines, small parts of his bowel, and his appendix had to be removed after participating in this challenge. They both did end up surviving, which is very, very lucky, but it is extremely dangerous. Okay, the blue whale challenge. I cannot go too deep into the blue whale because there is unironically just way too much information about the blue whale challenge for me to even conceivably uh, go through in one video. Well, I would be able to do it in one video if I had an entire video about it, which is very possible that I actually might do. But the Blue Way Challenge is, in its short form, an online phenomenon that has been claimed to exist in uh, multiple different countries. The game consists of uh, a person doing a series of different challenges, which is uh, isolating them more and getting them more away from friends and families. This would predominantly be aimed at children and teens, usually women also, or girls, I should say, uh, which starts a 50-period timer from the first challenge to the last challenge. And the first challenge might be something pretty innocuous, like uh, don't listen to your favorite song or listen to the sad song. And the last challenge would always be the same. That challenge being film yourself During the challenge, there would also be introduced multiple different challenges of self-harm and isolation. The Blue Whale uh, first gained notoriety in Russia in 2016 and was first covered in the Russian newspaper Novaya Gazeta and has linked an extreme number of children and teens to this game. The game has also been banned in multiple different countries, but it is extremely difficult to get the perpetrators down and locate them. 
but I will most likely do a video about this because this there is straight up just too much information. So in short format, it's an online game where men who are older and also probably some women also uh, make up this game, which they would post on forums and on other social media to get young, maybe unhappy children and teens to participate in, which were a way for them to manipulate them into, at the end, film themselves and multiple people has also been arrested for being a part of this game. The Hot Water Challenge. The Hot Water Challenge is a challenge which Kits was inspired to do on YouTube, TikTok, and what have you. It involves pouring boiling hot water on an unsuspecting friend. And in one fatal instance, forcing a friend to drink boiling hot water directly through a straw. Gemonisha Merritt of the Bronx was badly burned when friends poured boiling hot water over him and 10-year-old Weasley Smith of North Carolina suffered severe burns after him and his stepbrother tried to do the challenge. And 8-year-old Kiari Pope of Florida unfortunately lost her life after getting dared uh, into drinking boiling hot water through a straw. Pope burned her mouth and throat and received a tracheotomy. That's the one where you, um, you cut up a little hole here so you can get air from directly from your lungs so you don't have to use your, your mouth. Suffered during respiratory problems. The night she died, she told her family that she could not breathe and fell unconscious shortly after. The dangerous TikTok school shooting trend. The trend is uh, people calling in their school uh, in America saying that they're going to do a school shooting or someone else is going to do a school shooting and then try to vandalize it and uh, try to make it seem like there's going to be a massacre very, very soon. Yeah, this is tier five. The Holocaust Challenge. If you don't know what the Holocaust is, the Holocaust was a concentration camp during Second World War where the Nazis would imprison people that they did not seem pure, uh, which would usually be Jews and other people of other races or who they just didn't really like, and they would torture them and kill them. The Holocaust Challenge is where teens dress up like the dead people of the Holocaust. So they would have like sad makeup on and have like 1950 clothes on and then lip sync to music and talk about how sad they were and all the torture they endured during this uh, holocaust. Other versions show the representation of the genocide of the Jewish population acting out what happened to them, sometimes using uh, pictures of the holocaust, uh, Auschwitz, one of the centers, as a backdrop. Some creators did the yellow star of David, the ones that Jews were forced to wear during the Second World War, and some would even dressed up in striped shirts that they were in the concentration camps. Some people have claimed, like a 17-year-old girl from New Jersey, that the reason why they've done this uh, Holocaust channel is to raise awareness. And I've said that in multiple different videos, but I do not think you need to fucking raise awareness about one of the worst genocides in the entire world. People probably know. And some other people say it's to educate people. So I think it's really good that you can do your little TikTok dance while uh, acting like you're a tortured Holocaust victim. The 17-year-old even went on to newspaper and said that she felt it was very important to share this story uh, where she would fake a dead person from the Holocaust genocide. The person that she portrayed was a person who was getting deported with their family to Auschwitz where they all were murdered in the gas chambers. She went on to say that she never intended it to be offensive. She felt it was uh, important to educate people. While others view it as a trauma and say that it's really offensive for people and family members and the Jewish population. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm gonna have to agree on that one. That is incredibly fucking offensive that some random ass 17-year-old American girl is just pretending to be a, a, a person getting killed in the Holocaust to raise fucking awareness. I don't know, go read a book or tell people to read about history, bro. Fucking... And other people would even go so far to show uh, videos of uh, how they got killed in the Holocaust and what happened to them and do representation of what killed them in the fucking Holocaust. And bro, I'm getting fucking heated up about this because that is so fucking offensive. Like, that's actually fucking crazy. The autism challenge. The autism challenge is um, people uh, faking having autism in social uh, environments uh, to raise awareness again. So it's basically just uh, people trying to show themselves uh, completing various tasks, faking having autism. Like, this is how it is for a normal person, and this is how it is for a person with autism. Uh, 
to show how life is different from people with autism, which is also just highly fucking offensive because maybe it should be people who live with autism that should try to raise awareness. It kind of reminds me of the girl that faked having Tourette's to show people how life was with Tourette's when she didn't even have fucking Tourette's, but she just used it as a marketing scheme and a brain scheme. Like, bro, what the... F- what can I even say? These, uh, I'm very sorry, but here at the end, I'm uh, quite annoyed about these because a lot of these are really fucked up. Now we're getting to the last ones, and these are extremely grim. I have to preface this enough. If you are squeamish or if you don't like to hear about death and don't like to hear about true crime and stuff like that, I will have to tell you to maybe you should skip this one because these last ones are incredibly grim. The Angel of Death Challenge. As the name uh, might lead you to believe, it is also very true. The Angel of Death Challenge originated from Indonesia, which is a challenge where they have to prove if the angel of death is going to take them or if they're going to get saved. Now, how would you go about to do that? Well, the most common way to show the angel of death challenge is a person filming one to more individuals running into the streets of passing cars and then standing directly in front of a car going towards them, standing still and seeing if the car will break, if they will be saved or if the car won't make it in time and will then severely injure them or kill them. The participant would run or jump in front of a moving vehicle and the challenge is complete if the car stops before it hits the participant. The challenge has impacted a lot of teens and has already been proven to be fatal. Two teenagers in Indonesia lost their lives to this gruesome challenge and they unfortunately suffered skull injuries which proved to be fatal. And to make matters even worse, not only was it those two, but there was 14 other teenagers with them, where most of them got severely injured in this incident. And here is the very last one, the George Floyd challenge. George Floyd died on May the 25th after a Minneapolis police officer knelt on his neck for multiple minutes while taking him into custody for allegedly trying to pass a fake $20 bill. During the eight long minutes where he suffered, you could hear George Floyd multiple times say that he couldn't breathe. And since then, four other officers involved in the incident has been charged in the connection of the incident. In response to this awful incident, people started taking videos and uh, pictures of themselves kneeling on their friend's neck, saying it was a part of the George Floyd challenge. And participating in this trend has led to Uh, three individuals in the UK being arrested. And two individuals aged 18 and 19 were arrested in Northern England by police after their George Floyd challenge circulated the internet. And they were arrested on the cases of causing anxiety and distress. And this challenge is getting perceived and charged as a hate crime. So the challenge is literally just um, doing the same the police officer did to George Floyd. Here at the end... I would like to thank you for watching these videos. I know that they got very, very dark at the end, but that is also a little bit kind of like the whole point of an iceberg. They just start peaceful and you end in a way that is uh, very horrific. Yeah, I don't have that much more to say, actually. I hope that you enjoyed this video and it was educational and informational for some of you. And I also hope that uh, during the less horrible parts of this mold series that you also got some uh, humor in and you thought it was a little bit funny and interesting. Uh, Under that, I don't have that much more to say other than thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe because it really truly does help out a lot. And I do see all of your guys' comments. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you have a great one and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.